This is Wanda Alger, and today is Wednesday, July 12th. I want to share with you a very important word from the Lord for the body of Christ. For believers, this is uh, something the Lord showed me through a dream last week, and I've been praying about it, pondering it. And the reason that I believe this is going to be important for us is we are in a spiritual war. I think we all know that. And as much as probably a lot of us would like to hear a prophetic word about what's happening in the nation or the corruption that's being exposed or, uh, you know, name dropping or, you know, what, what's going on with the real president, whatever, you know, these are all important things, certainly, but it really doesn't matter how many exposures happen and what's brought to light. If we, as the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia of God, if we're not ready, God has given us the spiritual authority to be the change agents on the earth. We're the ones. Yes, everyone has a part, but this is a spiritual war, first and foremost, and we have the authority in Christ to overturn and overcome all the demonic schemes that we are seeing played out. And this dream uh, is important because we have to recognize the atmosphere around us and how it is being charged. I mean, you who are intercessors, you understand this. If you are prophetic, if you are alert to the spirit, you can feel it. I mean, in the last number of years, you, the fear, the apprehension, the panic, uh, the negativity, uh, so much has happened. But what this dream is going to show is that we have a part in that atmosphere and we can turn the tide, but we have to guard our hearts because there are things that are going on that we as individuals, we have a choice in how we respond, how we react. And this really, this dream kind of shows how principalities form because we are dealing with principalities, all kinds of them all across the earth. And yet, and even though it seems like, oh, this is overwhelming. No, each individual, we have a part in this. Okay. So I wanted to just kind of set it up that way, but this dream had kind of two parts because on the one hand, what I saw, it, and it's very, you know, this is symbolic. It's, it's a parable. It's a night parable. All right. Uh, it's showing kind of in the spirit how things are kind of looking. And then it kind of turned and it showed me more in the natural of what it looks like. So basically I'm in the dream and I'm seeing all these elephants, just a herd full of elements. And I mean, they were charging towards me and I was with a massive, just a mass of people. Okay. And all of these elephants were charging at us. And in the middle of this herd, all of a sudden I see this huge, I mean, the word that came to mind was behemoth. I mean, it was the hugest of all elephants. It had so many legs, you couldn't even count them. I mean, it just was massive. And it was about to just totally crush everyone. And I was just like in shock. Then all of a sudden it shifts and it's as if I'm inside this thing. I'm inside it. And, and I can see now what's happening. And the first thing I see is this one little elephant and he comes to kind of center screen and he's got a rider on it. And another element that's a little bit bigger than him all of a sudden steps on the element and crushes his head and totally destroys the animal. Well, then that elephant starts moving forward and a little bit bigger elephant comes behind him, does the same thing. The front feet, you know, go on his head, crush him down and, and totally destroys that elephant. Now, these elephants are being ridden by, they almost look like circus riders, whatever, but they're just looking straight ahead, kind of oblivious. But I'm seeing this progression. And it starts with this little elephant getting crushed and then one after another, and they each get bigger and bigger and they're just crushing. And I, I just kind of knew that's how this big thing formed. Interesting parallel here, if you follow with me. So then it shifts. Now it, I am actually standing in front of this scene. And it's as if I am now a part of what is happening and this is more real life. I'm watching the, this elephant in front of me, but in the dream, I see this woman coming towards me and I can tell in the dream that she's kind of nasty and she's talking at me and she's saying something and she's basically speaking curses at me. And right as she passes, the very last thing she does is she pushes out her hand and she pushes me to the side. I mean, just, it was so obvious that she wanted to just push me down while well, I look over it. And basically I didn't know there was a chasm. I mean, I'm, I'm basically going to die right? Last second, I see a ledge that I'm able to save myself, pull myself up. 
and I'm standing again. And now I'm seeing this woman with her back to her, but she's walking away. I am so angry at what she did. How dare she did that on purpose. And I was so mad at her and she had long hair. I grabbed her by the hair with every intention of chewing her out because of what she did. But as soon as I grabbed her hair, it was like something changed. And I realized, what am I doing? I can't do this. This isn't right. This isn't going to help. And I find myself all of a sudden, instead of cursing her, I start blessing her. And I start thanking her, you know, for, for who she is. And, you know, thank you for who you are. And I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate what you said and what you did, whatever. And, and, and then I let go and I walked away. And that was the dream. <laughs> well, you know, the simplistic interpretation of that, as soon as I woke up, it was like, okay, you know, bless those who curse you. I mean, that was, that was kind of obvious. But you have to understand the context here. And this does have, I think, both, it has personal implications. But see, the Lord is giving us a picture of how principalities form. That, those elephants, you know, the word, the word behemoth came to mind. Now, in scripture, in Job, God actually mentions a behemoth as this creature that he created. And biblical scholars, no one knows what that animal was. Um, could be an elephant. Some have suggested a hippopotamus, whatever. Now, later on, God does mention Leviathan, but this is behemoth. And that's what it felt like, this behemoth, massive thing. The Lord was showing me, this is how principalities are formed. It starts with one person at a time. And what he was showing me, this is, this is a fence. And I knew that it was someone who cursed me, someone who hurt me, someone who wounded me. But here's the interesting thing. I asked, I asked Bobby, my husband, who's a pastor, and I said, okay, so tell me if, as a pastor, you know, in the church, how do you see this? You know, why, why would the Lord be presenting this? How have you seen offense work in the church, you know, in terms of it being a, a real problem? And he said, well, certainly individuals will get offended and hurt at people and happens, uh, you know, because we're humans. But he said, what, he said, what I have seen more than not is a spirit of offense gets unleashed in a church. And that spirit of offense, we've seen it both at Crossroads and at other churches. And what happens when there is a spirit of offense that comes into a body? It's like all of a sudden, different people will all of a sudden get upset about things. And this is where we know it's a spirit of offense because it usually happens like within a very short period of time, two or three individuals, you know, come forward or they contact the pastor or we hear secondhand, someone has been offended. And it's usually an extreme kind of case, or it came out of nowhere, or it's like just looking at it and the natural is like, how do they get that? And, and we've seen this, that this is how the spirit of offense works. It sneaks its way into the, to the body, into the church, because it's seeking to divide and to take out people and especially take out leaders. And that's a spirit of offense. And, you know, how it comes in, whether or not people are praying against it or it just takes one person to get offended. And then they, because they don't get rid of that, then they just go ahead and pass that on to someone else. See, in the dream, that's what I was, that's what was happening. The, the elephant stepping on, I mean, it was crushing. It was like the words are crushing to an individual. But if you don't stop, if you don't realize that's the spirit of offense that's trying to get on you, your natural fleshly, uh, you know, reaction is going to be to get back at that person. And that's because that's what I felt in the dream that, that I got to get back at that. This is not right. And I felt totally justified because it was not right. She was mean. She was trying to destroy me and see, this is how we fall prey to this is because we spiritualize it and we feel justified in what we're doing. But the interesting thing, cause I had to ask the Lord, what is it with that? The woman having long hair and me grabbing her hair. Now that can mean different things to different people, but because I'm the dreamer and the Lord knows my dream language, when I think of long hair, biblically, long hair is often mentioned as a covering. It's meant to be a covering. And so I realized, oh, the enemy, he's undercover. He likes to cover himself, be undercovering, and come across as being spiritual, but he's not. And so when I grabbed the hair, it's as if I realized this is demonic, this is the enemy. And all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, this is warfare with a spiritual enemy, not with this person. And I was able to just bless that person and not get caught up in this spirit of offense. 
because that's the right attitude, is that you recognize the spirit that's attached to it. Again, when when you get offended, it's you usually have some just cause, you know, why you've been hurt uh, and and you feel justified in getting back. But this is what the Lord is wanting us to be aware of, is that there is a spirit of offense that we need to stop. It's already rampant within the body of Christ and in the nation, probably so, because these are how principalities are formed. This is, this is what t- has taken out pastors. This is what has divided churches, is a spirit of offense that's never dealt with because we don't realize the spirit behind it. And if we can, we can separate it out because from a practical standpoint, you know, in our own congregation, as we have encountered this in years past, most of the time, the people who are caught up in this, they have no idea that they are being pawns of the enemy because they have, they have a legitimate hurt. You know, something has happened. They've, they've been wounded and, and it is, you know, oftentimes hurtful and painful. But see, when a spirit of offense gets in there, it just magnifies it. It's like extreme offense. That's when you know, okay, no, this isn't just, you know, someone said something that wasn't very nice. No, there is something fueling it that really fires it up and it's extreme. And you can just, you can sense the tension and and the, the anxiousness with it. Why would the Lord give a kind of dream like this? Well, could it be that if this spirit of offense is alive and well, Can you imagine how it's feeding the behemoth? We are feeding principalities when when we go along with these things. And I mean, this is just one example, a spirit of offense. I mean, how many other, you know, uh, things, you know, that are not godly mindsets, habits, attitudes, we're feeding. I mean, this is how important it is, our own response and how we deal with conflict. And, and especially now, and this is why, you know, as I was pondering it and, and even what I've been studying lately about the spiritual atmosphere, we're either attracting heaven or, you know, or hell, you know, light or dark by our words, by our attitudes. They're very important. They're very powerful in the spirit. Words are very important, but our attitudes are as well. And so, it, you know, and I know the Lord's been teaching me a lot lately about worship and praise and how powerful that is. I mean, that's nothing new, but I tell you, when the warfare gets so intense, we have to look at the weapons of our warfare more carefully. And it just, it seems like the Lord is reminding us, be alert to how the spirit of offense might try to trip us up and to recognize it for what it is and to not give into it, to not yield. We can still be kind to a person. We can still speak blessing. And you can, you know, pray accordingly and take your stand against the enemy. I mean, we've seen this happen so many times, you know, when we're able to sit down with people and they actually ask for help, you know, we'll bring this up. And many times we'll even just decide, let's just pray together first. (laughs) It's amazing what happens when people pray together. I mean, we've seen it where the spirit of God just comes in. And I mean, he does the healing during the prayer and we're done with the prayer and it's okay. Now, what was the issue? Well, I really don't have any issue anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's how important it is. And that's how volatile it can be if we don't invite Holy Spirit to come and be at the center of it. Two scriptures that kind of came to mind. One was from Proverbs. For as the, and this is Proverbs 30, 33. For as the churning of milk yields butter, and the twisting of the nose draws blood, so the stirring of anger brings forth strife. This is what the enemy loves to do, just stir things up, stir things up, and keep it going, keep it going. And the Lord's just saying, stop, don't go there. Hebrews 12, 15, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it, many become defiled. That's definitely been happening. So we've got to start as believers. You know, if if the shoe fits, wear it. If you see it at work around you, just pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit would intervene and expose that spirit for what it really is. And pray for reconciliation. Pray that hearts would be softened, that that people would pray together and that they would determine to be one of spirit uh, and, and not let the enemy get the best. So I present that to you. Uh, you know, we, we have been given a charge 
as believers in Christ, again, as the church, the ecclesia, everything that we're, we're still facing. And, and, and I do want to share this because the Lord has been reminding me of it, even in my own, uh, well, during my sabbatical here recently, and the resetting that he's been doing in my own heart is that, you know, the majority of things that he gives me through dreams uh, and revelations, whatever, it's for the body of Christ. And there's a reason for it. It's because he sees everything that's happening in the nation. He is a part of these exposures. He is working through many different people to bring all these pieces together. But I know that my part is to speak to the body of Christ, that we become who we're supposed to become because we're, we're supposed to be the answer. We're supposed to be modeling to the world. There is a different kingdom here. We don't belong to this world. There is another kingdom that we are a part of. It's one of authority and power of love, of goodness. This is what he wants to demonstrate because that's what's going to displace all these lesser kingdoms. So it's so important that we build up our spirit, that we get rid of these strongholds and mindsets, and that we are becoming, you know, the sons and daughters of the most high God, and that we are walking in that kind of kingdom authority and, and kingdom blessing and favor and honor, because the world might actually start asking us, wow, how do you do that? I'd like to be that kind of person. I hope you do too. Well, the last thing I want to share, uh, it, for those of you who might be new to following me, I have a number of social media platforms. You can go to my blog at wandaalger.me. And if you really want to keep up with what I put out, I have a weekly newsletter, Wanda's weekly newsletter. And it comes out every Wednesday or Thursday. And it's free. You just sign up for it on my homepage. But for those of you who sign up, first time subscribers, up until August 1, when you subscribe as a thank you, you're going to get a free PDF download of the devotional that Bobby and I wrote together called Making Room for His Presence. It's a 21-day community devotional. It's very powerful. It's a devotional for your community dealing with strongholds, dealing with the kinds of issues I'm talking about, and really praying that the Holy Spirit would come and permeate the atmosphere, that you could shift the atmosphere, making room for His presence and get rid of all these other principalities. So this is free, a PDF download uh, when you subscribe to my weekly newsletter, okay? And it's on my homepage there at wandaalger.me up until August 1st. So I would love to hear, what are your comments? Have you experienced the spirit of offense, uh, perhaps in your family, in your church? I mean, you don't need to go into details, but maybe you've seen God intervene. How have you seen that overcome? Has this spoken to you in some way? challenge you? Is this even relevant to what you're experiencing right now or what you see? Leave your comments below. Let's encourage each other. All right. So blessings until next time.